the sound out here is quite remarkable. A lot of activity. You can hear the fanning in the hives, just like a waterfall out here, a lot of white noise. So you can see I brought a, a skid of honey supers out here and I'm fixing to deal these out in the apiary. Um, they're, they're certainly been bringing in the nectar and making honey here in this, uh, the last week or two. It's the 15th and I'm adding thirds to some of them. So I think we're doing okay. Now, before this bee stings me, I'm going to go get my veil and uh, get started on this. So there's always a question, when do you super your hives? You know, and, and there's no, I don't think there's any hard and fast rule or good answer to that question because there's a lot of variables. Uh, in most things in beekeeping, an answer to almost any question in beekeeping would start with, it depends. And some of the variables are What's my particular honey flow like? Is it low and slow? Is it long and drawn out? How much honey do I typically get in a honey flow? And what period of time does that honey come in? Uh, or, you know, honey doesn't come in, nectar comes in, but you know what I mean. So that's a variable. Uh, if someone in a, in a part of the world that gets uh, 50 pounds of honey over uh, eight weeks, that's not the kind of advice I need as far as when to super a colony. Um, our honey flow is typically very fast, very short, and uh, produces a lot of honey. I'm talking uh, 200 pounds in six weeks. So uh, the rule that you hear online a lot is, while well, your wait is 80% full, and then you look how chill these bees are. <laughs> They're not reacting to me at all. Um, the uh, the rule that you see online, people say, well, it's 80% full, then you add a super. Well, that won't do here. You don't wait till it's 80% full. However, I will caveat that. I want to put more super, uh, I want to have more empty space earlier on in the, in the flow than later on. So then I get up my crystal ball and I say, well, when is the flow going to end? and uh, then you know decrease the amount of of free space as i approach that so you can see i need to be a bit of a fortune teller now um, i want to put on quite a bit of space right now i typically will pull off a hundred or more pounds per colony and uh, that's that's three boxes or more uh, four boxes Five is not unheard of, but it's uh, not nearly as common for me. Uh, so I want to put on a box here. When I see them on the 15th of July, when I see them uh, working a box, I want to add another box, right? Because they're going to fill that box and need more space. Uh, if this was the 5th of August and they, had, they started working a box, I'm not going to add another one at that time. And besides that foundation, I want to make sure I get my foundation on at the beginning of the flow, not at the end. I'm actually adding almost exclusively uh, drawn comb today. I've put on pretty much all the foundation I'll put on. This was a foundation frame, just to show you. So they're just starting to work that, just starting to put nectar in there. So they've drawn that, and, and that's, that's a frame that I waxed. I pre-waxed that foundation. And another thing is I do prefer to run nine frames in here. They uncap nicer, I save equipment. Every 10 colonies, I got another box of, of uh, frames, right? Uh, saves me a lot of money. And so, uh, but also when I have foundation on here, I want 10 frames so that they don't start drawing them kind of crazy. Uh, so I'll start with 10 and then when I come to put this next box on I'll take one of these out space them to nine because now they're drawn and then I can add eight because the next box is drawn uh, So I don't need to add another nine, but I want to check this uh, This second box down and if it Has 10 frames. I'm going to change that into nine while I'm here, they've glued the frames to the upper box. 
and usually digging around in here is when they get mad and come out swinging. Okay, I think, yeah, there's nine. There's nine in that, so we'll leave that alone. I could take some out of here and look down too. Okay. I supered my out yard this morning and I didn't take a veil or a smoker. <laughs> I didn't even have a hive tool in my hand and I had to super these. And there was one of them that they were pretty feisty. I had to get creative. Okay, I'm gonna break these. I'm gonna break these free. And now I, you know, I kind of have time to do this. Today, I'm not in that much of a hurry. I'm sort of getting my supers on a little bit earlier this season. So, got a little bit extra leeway. I've had some rest, I'm feeling good. Some of these frames really look nice. They're nicely drawn. Most of this was foundation. Foundation like 10 days ago, or whatever it was I put these on. I'll try to get that one out. That's beautiful. gonna smoke these a little bit I haven't really smoked them a lot and they're uh, starting to get a little jumpy there it's not that warm it's been rainy so they're kind of a little a little jumpy okay so they're kind of freed up now I get my stainless spacing tool that I love so much and just like that nine frames now this is a drawn super and you may see that there's ten frames in here so I need to take two out because I want nine and I'm going to add one from the box below it just like that and then, once again, space those out nice. Commercial guys don't use a tool like this. And I don't think, yeah, you know, they might say, oh, I don't have time. You have time because of this, I've seen commercial guys do it. And this is way faster than what they're doing, but you gotta keep track of a tool. And that's the problem. My first summer working bees, I used the standard telescoping cover, inner wooden inner cover and stuff like that. And I noticed that uh, the little cutout on the front, the bees really liked the upper entrance. So when I went to the migratory covers the next year, I cut uh, some wood pieces <clears throat> that are just shy of the length. And that gives an upper entrance, just holds the lid up sideways. I put it on the outside, of course. Um, no, I've never used them since that first year until now. But I'm using them now for ventilation because it's been so hot. It gives them just a little, little hole there on this side to vent air. So it's always a judgment. You open these and see, well, should they? The first thing I see is it's full of bees, right? The bees are working this right to the top. So it looks to me like that they will deserve. It's kind of like they need or they deserve or they'll tolerate, right? Uh, another super. So again, I'll take one of these out. And uh, then so I'll bring eight, I'll bring eight more frames, except I've got two there. So I can bring six frames.
I find it easiest if I slide the frames mostly toward me and then give it a push like that. And again, I've used the plastic ones. I have the plastic ones and I don't ever use them. This is the one. Plastic ones, uh, they just don't have the strength to be able to do that. They're more of a guide than they are a tool to push the frames. Okay. Now I think I'll put a upper entrance here as well. This one definitely will deserve another box because you may have you may remember I put a lot of foundation on last time around almost exclusively foundation so you can see how they've got a really nice start on that I'd like it a little more before I put it into a nine frame, but you know, that's okay. I'm going to take this off and look, I'm going to look two boxes down. Great to have my hive lifter today, but I don't. Well, this is, this is distressing. Every year I'm not really sure how to do this. Look at my comb honey frames. They're, they're devoid. They've not done anything in my comb honey frames. Mm-hmm. thinking maybe I'll move that comb box up to the top. They're not working it there, so. We'll change the configuration a little. It's a plastic excluder. Six to the honey super, more than anything. Okay, I'll put the full super on the brood chamber. That's a full super, all right. That's a heavy deep. Put this one that's not full. But see, I don't think I can take a nine uh, at the 10th frame out of here because I want to put this comb super at the top. I don't want to add another box. I want to keep them, kind of force them to work this. And I can't put a deep frame in a medium box. Okay. Hopefully they start working that. This one's got three deeps and medium already.
I think I just added that though. Well, there's 10 frames. I want to look at the comb honey box here too. This one's got some weight to it. This one's full, nine frames. <laughs> That's full, nine frames. And again, they have not built out my foundationless frames here. So I'm going to try to put those on top. <sighs> really need my hive lifter, don't I? I wasn't planning to do this. Okay, there's a little room in this box. These outside frames haven't been touched. It's just starting to work those. Hopefully they'll get on it. I'm not sure what the configuration difference is to them. But hopefully it makes a difference and they start to work that. So I had a new experience yesterday. Not one I really wanted, but it was a new experience no less. I got stung by a bumblebee yesterday. I'd heard that a bumblebee sting is a little nasty, and I would agree. She just flew up really fast and just tagged me just like that and flew away. I don't think they have a barbed stinger, so they can do that. And... Boy, my arm ached really bad. Still a little sensation there, but it, it got tight, tight and a little bit swollen right all in this area. Uh, so it was very uncomfortable. And that's really contrasted from the way I don't react to honeybee stings. I re I very, very little reaction to honeybee stings. But like I say, I've never been stung by a bumblebee before okay this box is pretty well empty box of foundation if i'd have known i was going to check all these comb supers i would have brought my hive lifter There's more bees in this one. And there's a little bit of work going on here. There's a lot of festooning, that's what you want to see. So they've got some comb built there. They're kind of starting to make it banana shape. They, they seem to not like to naturally make it straight. They somehow they always love to start going in an arc of some kind. Sometimes I can 
convince them otherwise. Just work it like that. But that's the only, that's the only comb that they have. They don't have any over here. There's lots of festooning, but I'll move this one up too. Uh, metal queen excluder, look at that. That's why I like metal over plastic. I like plastic because they're cheaper, but the metal one seems to stick to the brew chamber better. And uh, I, I'm gonna put an upper entrance in here, but this queen excluder is completely covered in drones. I'm just gonna dump them, let them out of there. Sometimes I come to a hive and there's a bunch of dead drones there. It doesn't make me happy. That's 10 frames though. I'd like that to be nine. Benign. I'd like that to be benign. No, B, nine under the bee. I'm still working on it, I haven't capped it, so they'll they'll build these out a bit. Tell there's not much in that deep when I lift it with one hand. So that'll stay at 10 because it's largely foundation. So there's, that kind of speaks to the debate. Do the bees build comb from the top or the bottom? Do they, do they fill it with honey from the top or the bottom? Maybe they fill from the top and that's why they weren't working my, my comb super. a full deep of honey okay again they really haven't done a whole lot the outside to our foundation or were this one's filled up now uh, actually I see some here and they've gone sort of sideways so I'll see what I can do I don't I don't want to work too hard on my comb but when I see stuff like this I think I can improve things a bit get them back on track and I think I'll move this one up as well and I can eat more easily check it if it's at the top too and this is 10 frames so I'll take one out of here
They're starting to cap that. That's nice. Now this is 10 frames as well. I can take two out because there's honey in this one. There's a little bit in that one too, but I can use that. See how they draw that stuff I've been waxing? They just draw that right away. It works great. Big fan of waxing frames. Comb super at the top. If you know anything about comb honey production, let me know. I just dabble. I don't spend a lot of time uh, studying the craft or experimenting with different things. I just put foundationless frames in and let her rock. <clears throat> but I am developing a market for it, so now I have some responsibility to take a little bit seriously and get it get it to work out <coughs> 10 frames in that yeah that's, that's really heavy <laughs> why don't you go get your hive lifter well it's as long as over there okay Oh, this, this is actually looking really good right now. Nice uh, medium frame here of uncapped honey. Because if it's not capped, it's not really honey though, is it? Well, that's beautiful. Look at how beautiful that is. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. These bees, I don't know, these are the comb honey bees. I don't know what the difference is. So they've drawn all of them out, fill them right up. And they kind of still go on a bit of a arc there. So I'm gonna change things on them a little bit. Is they've got this one right around connected to this one and that won't do at all and then they've stopped drawing this one too short as a result so because this isn't capped any changes I make uh, they should just kind of Finish it, finish it up nicely. Get that in there. Okay, that's pretty good. I may go to nine frames on this, which causes me a little problem because then I, uh, I got an extra medium, which, what do I do an extra medium? This is looking really nice. Well, at the top it does anyway. It's a little squirrely down below. I'll turn them. Just so the facing profile is a little different and maybe they'll sort of straighten that out. See what my spacer tool does. Okay, I think that's going to work. And we'll check back again in a week or so. Question, do I leave it on the bottom? Uh, one problem with leaving it on the bottom is there's things called travel stains. And they walk on it all the time getting up to the top. And it's not what you want. So I'll move it up. 
And I'll take one out of here. See that hive tool? That's nice and straight. Can't do that with a Chinese hive tool. It look like a banana. Look at that nice deep honey. That's just beautiful. I want to eat it right here. It's mostly capped, but you know, anything that's not, they draw it a little bit more. Oh, this box is upside down. <laughs> I'm glad the frames didn't fall out. All right, so I'm gonna pull one of these out. Uh-oh. And see this one, devoid. They haven't done anything. They they put honey in the, uh, well, some of it was comb and some was foundation. So. I'd hate to get the end of the honey flow and have no comb honey. Like I say, I've got a market for it now. People kind of depend on getting it. That box is full. Right to the outside frame, they're filling that up. Actually, I haven't filled that yet, but they've got the inside of it full. I'll turn that around. <clears throat> Encourage them. I'll check this one. I'll likely take one of these out. Well, that one is heavy, I can feel it. Okay, let's check the coal money. See, now this is heavier too. The last ones were quite empty. Now this one's quite empty, so somehow I, it's kind of weird. I don't know why I do that. There's no bees in it. Why is there no bees in here? Oh, you know what? This one swarmed. Yeah, this one swarmed. Look at the population, it's terrible. Okay. I'm gonna put this <clears throat> mostly full super here. Um, I think I wanna give that comb super to somebody else though. Because this colony ain't going to fill it. I made a box of honey before they took off. Maybe they'll get strong enough to make another one. Uh, no, I can't reduce this. Stay at 10. That's got 10 frames. <laughs> and 
This one has started on the comb frames. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're doing good. They, they're keeping it reasonably straight. They always go in an arc at the end though. Okay. And it's not to do with the next frame. The next frame goes that way. And the arc was the opposite way. I will move it up though, so I can keep an eye on it. I'll give this an upper entrance so the drones can get out. Drones and queen excluders are not compatible. These have three deeps over the three deeps over the comb super. Hopefully they're not all very full. That one's well it's got something in it. As soon as I lifted that I got stung in the thumb. And this has got something in it too. Wow, they made a lot of honey. Wow. Tell you, the other day I got stung, actually you can see it. I don't know if you can, but there's a dot there. I got stung right there. I just about blacked out. That hurt so much. That hurt so much. I saw stars. This one's right full too. <laughs> Hopefully the comb, hum, comb, comb super is full. I hope the comb super is full. And it's not. It's, uh, they're working on it, but it's not full by any means. They started jumping on me. Stung me a bunch of times. Well, they got two done and one one that I gotta fix. Oh man, they started on one and then jumped to the other. Oh, I don't know how to do it. I'm jumpy now. lifter he says I can do it he says yeah Those are full of honey. This hive has a combination of uh, Pureco single wax uh, plastic, black plastic foundation and the uh, Man Lake right cell black plastic foundation. Uh, Pureco sent me uh, 20, 20 uh, sheets of foundation uh, to use. <clears throat> Actually, they sent me 10 
of the single wax and 10 of the double wax. So I decided to checkerboard it through here just to see how the bees work it side by side. I just had a quick check. There's not much to see yet. Um, this is the Man Lake Wright cell. And, you know, they, they've just barely started it. See a little bit of white wax on there. Barely touching it. And the one right beside it here is the Pure Co Single Wax. And it, I would say it looks pretty well the same. Really not a big difference. No worse, maybe better, I don't know. So once the bees work this a little more, we'll revisit this and see how they make out. Now, there is another box, uh, two boxes actually. There's, there's another box of this, there's another box, uh, two more boxes with the Pure Co Double Wax and Right Cell. And you know, if the, if the Double Wax beats the Right Cell there, it's not really apples and apples, but I don't use any Double Wax foundation, so it's all I had to go on. I guess I could have put Double Wax and Single Wax together as a comparison, but I didn't. Okay, this is one of the three remaining overwintered colonies. And boy, they were doing nicely. <laughs> Every time I grab one, I think I should go get my hive lifter and then I don't. <laughs> these are easier to lift if you do it like this. And this is right full too, 10 frames, right full. Just don't want it to fall over, that's sitting on its end. And they've got one frame of comb started, actually one on each side. They do need a little bit of tutelage here, so we'll work on that. I'm gonna take a frame out, see if giving them more space encourages them to go a little straighter. Oh, these are a little jumpy though. A bit stingy. That is heavy. That is at least a 50 pound box. Maybe more. That's all capped. It's not gonna do much good going to nine frames if it's all capped. But I'll do it anyway. There's some in the middle that's not yet capped. They'll stretch that out a bit. So that's the comb super is on top on this one. And it's kind of the same story. They haven't done a whole lot in there. So this is the Pureco double wax versus right cell, but 
again the, the visa just gets started so I would expect the double wax to be outperforming the right cell uh, by a good margin so let's take a look at a right cell okay so they just got to start here um, you know it's early on this is a Pierco double wax <clears throat> look at that they've got a, a lot better start on that I got them out of order here. I've got two double wax side by side. <clears throat> so that was the Pirco double wax, but the next frame out is a right cell. And look at that. I mean, you can't argue with that, can you? That's pretty good. Here's another double wax. I can definitely see the yellow tinge, which is the wax that the manufacturer supplied, as opposed to the white wax that the bees supplied. <clears throat> and then the outside frame is a, is a right cell. I mean, look at that. So I don't know, you know, the, the jury is out right now on this stuff. Um, what's better? I don't know. That's a that's a right cell. Just getting started. This is a Pierco double wax. So definitely the double wax uh, can get a <clears throat> a quicker start here. Uh, but certainly the the right cell is not lagging. Certainly considering that it's not a double wax product. So there you go. Take that for what it's worth. There's nine nine frames in that one. A beautiful box of honey. So leave that on there. They're gonna fill that with honey. And hopefully they get to work on this this medium comb honey here too. They've started this one, but they're starting to go. Oh no, they're going straight. It's nice. Just started to put honey in that. Okay. So this is the one, if you remember, uh, that w this box actually was sitting there and it was the drone laying queen. So I put the box on top of this hive so they can fill it with honey. <clears throat> and last week, I requeened this with uh, a James McNally special. So I'm going to give her some time yet, but they are plugging this out. So I want to make sure she doesn't lose place to lay. So I'll nine frame this one. I'll add the super that I took away from the other colony. I'll leave 10, I guess. Wow, that's beautiful. A nice nine frame box, right full of white wax. I need to get out this comb super. <clears throat> Which they've not drawn any comb honey in there yet either. <clears throat> so if this box is full, you know, I don't want my bees to swarm, but they do have space up here. Will they, will they get on this since that box is full? Will they make this a priority?
like maybe this one. Seem pretty full. That's a, a Nikot or Nico, and I see OT. Uh, queen excluder. I think they're good. Uh, I think they have some design advantages over the the gray man lake one that I normally use. Oh, I made him mad. Same thing, they haven't touched this stuff. It's frustrating. They just like to make me worry, you know. Every year I get a good comb honey crop, but every year they just hold back enough to make me worry. These are all drawn. Yeah. Even 10 for now. And on top I can check these. I hope it I hope it works on top. I generally don't run a whole box of foundationless for comb. I'll run a few frames interspersed in a super. That's got an RQ on it. That tells me to requeen it. You sure as heck ain't making honey. Okay, I'm bushed. And my back hurts from lifting all those deeps. That's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, so these, I, I've got to super this one and, and I've got to shake these three down. These uh, nukes that I got on the mediums, they're doing really well. But they have no queen excluders, so I need to get in there and shake them down, get the queen in the bottom. So this bee is going to sting me, so I'll sign off. And I'll see you tomorrow.